In this video, I'm going to show you some of the techniques required for the hydrate lab. Okay, so we're going to be using these electronic balances, and I'm sure you've used electronic um, balances before, so the first thing you want to do is tear the balance. And then you're going to take your crucible. Now the crucible, you have to be careful because even things like fingerprints can affect the mass. So you want to get something to carry it in. I just took these uh, little petri dish, plastic petri dishes, which you can get in this cupboard right back here, near the balance. And I'm going to put it, and I use this to carry it. I'm going to use my tongs instead of my fingers. So once I've made sure the crucible is good and clean, I'm going to put it on here. And I'm going to record the mass of the crucible. And then you're going to take some amount of your hydrate that you have decided. Let's say you've decided to use 1.0 grams. You're going to add about a gram. Don't try to get 1.000 grams because if you do, you will be here all day. What you want is about a gram. So if it's 0.976 grams, that's fine. If it's 1.037 grams or 1.166 grams, as long as you know exactly what it is, it doesn't matter exactly how much. All right, so I'm going to add. I'm not going to retear, but I'm going to add until I get about a gram about above what I had. And then I'm going to record that mass. Now one of the things that's important is when you are recording the mass that shows on the balance, this displays three decimal points. This is a very uh, precise balance. It is called an analytical balance. It's pretty expensive because it gives very high accuracy. If you see the numbers moving around a lot, that means it's, there's airflow in here affecting the, the balance. You can close these. There's three drawers, doors, uh, one on the top and two on the sides. And closing these will prevent the air movement and you get a more stable reading. So you're going to record. So the first mass you record is going to be the crucible. The second mass you record will be the crucible plus hydrate. Okay. crucible tongs, which I've practiced with to make sure that I can pick them up without dropping. Okay. Okay, whenever we do a lab uh, that involves fire or anything particularly dangerous, we always want to push the stools in. We want to do a stand-up lab. So if something happens and there's fire or a chemical spill, it doesn't fall into our lab. So before we uh, look at lighting the Bunsen burner, I want to just talk about the nozzles at the bench. So the front nozzle is for air and, and it doesn't work, okay? So don't even worry about that. The two together at the back are the gas. And the gas has a nozzle and a handle. And if the handle and the nozzle are lined up together, then that gas is on full blast. So in order for the gas to be off, you need to have the handle be perpendicular or at a right angle to the nozzle. So I always say if the nozzles, if the handles are pointing directly at the sink, then those are off. What you never want to do is play with these during class and leave them on. Because if I turn the gas main on, which I do at the front of the room on a panel, I'll show it to you in class. And, um, so, and then let's say at the end of class I forgot to turn the, the gas main off. Gas continues to flow through the room through the gas jet. So if I have if I'm playing in the lab and I leave this on and the gas main is still on, then the room will fill with this flammable gas and all you need is a spark and there goes Downingtown Town East and all, all of us that are in it. We don't want that to happen, so we always leave them closed. And even during the lab, we leave them closed until we are ready to light the fire. Okay, so let's talk about the, about the parts of a Bunsen burner. So this Bunsen burner has this tall stem is known as the chimney. And the chimney allows um, air from the room, the oxygen that fire needs to burn, in. Okay, so I'm gonna close it all the way. And the other adjustment on here is at the bottom, and this is called the fine gas adjustment. So if I wanna change how much gas by small increments, I use the fine gas adjustment. Okay, so I always say start with both of these completely closed. And then you're going to do give the, each of them one 360 degree rotation, just approximate. And I'm going to attach the hose to the nozzle. Make sure it's nice and tight, and that there are no breaks in the hose where air will get out. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna turn on the gas main. So what I'm gonna do is once I am ready, only when I am ready to light the Bunsen burner, I'm gonna match out, I'm gonna move away any paper towels or papers, anything flammable, and I'm gonna turn the gas on. And I, I turn it on all the way. And then to light the match, you wanna strike down firmly. Be confident, okay. And here I have a nice reasonable flame, okay. So I'm going to put this down at the end of the bench and at the end of class when it's cool I'm going to throw it away. Okay, so my flame is a little bit too high so I can adjust the height either what I call at the bench which is with this nozzle or I can adjust it with my fine gas adjustment. Now my fine gas adjustment moves it very little. If you needed to put the flame out right away quickly, you always do it at the bench, at the big nozzle here. Okay. So, I have a, uh, a cool flame because it's yellow. If I wanted a really hot flame, what I'm going to do is open up my chimney and give it more oxygen. And what you want to do is you want to see this inner blue cone. And at the very tip of this inner blue cone is the hottest part of the flame. And that's usually what you want to use. Now in this lab, we are not using the hottest part of the flame. We're going to use a cooler flame. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my gas off and I'll show you how to set up the crucible. Okay. So I'm going to take my ring stand. I'm going to put a ring on it. Okay. And then I'm going to take what I call a clay triangle. And this clay triangle is pliable. I can make it smaller or bigger. I'm going to put it on here. And then I'm going to take my crucible with the hydrate and I'm going to put it on. Now this is, it almost fell through, so what I would need to do is tighten this. And I do that by pushing on the sides. Okay, so it should hold it better now. It looks pretty snug. So when I light my flame, I, I want to always adjust my target, the thing I'm heating. I don't ever want to adjust the flame to hit the target, okay? So what you always want is a relatively short flame, let's say about an inch high, because if it's any taller than that, what you'll see is it moves back and forth because there's a little bit of air movement in the room. And if, it's, if the flame is dancing around, then it's not going to um, be heating where it needs to be heating. So this is probably a little bit too high still. As long as this is cool, I can lower and raise this without gloves. If I'm trying to adjust this after I have started the flame, the heating, um, this is probably all hot and what I want to do is turn off the Bunsen burner, move it away, put on these hot gloves. I never want to use these next to the flame and then I will adjust, okay? I can raise it or lower it, okay? But these are still cold because I haven't heated yet. So that looks like it's about the right height. So what I'm going to do is move the Bunsen burner and I'm going to light it. Okay. And like I said, I want a cooler flame, so I'm going to close that chimney some to get the flame to be more yellow. And I'm going to lower it then with my fine gas adjustment. And I'm going to heat my hydrate for a minute or two like this. And I, I don't put a cover on it because I want to be able to watch my hydrate. Now you don't want to stick your face right over it because of it, it could splatter and you don't want it to hit you in the face. But you want to be able to see what's going on. You want to see whether or not your hydrate is burning specifically. And one of the things that you can do I'm going to lower the flame a little bit to get a little bit high. Is you can actually move the Bunsen burner to get nice, even heating throughout the hydrate. What you want to avoid is having the hydrate turn dark brown on the edges, which means it's burning and you're probably producing a new substance. What you want to do is just drive the water away. And um, gentle heating will do that for you. Okay. So once you are done with your heating, you're going to turn off your gas, remove your Bunsen burner, and you're going to let it just cool there for several minutes.
Now, one of the things you don't want to do is you don't want to take your crucible, your hot crucible, and put it on the cold bench because the temperature difference will cause it to shatter. So once you think it's cooled for a few minutes, you want to take it and put it down on this wire gauze. Okay. You want to give it a little bit more time. Now, if I move my hand close to it, I can still feel some heat. Okay, so I don't want to actually touch it to see if it's hot because I'm going to burn myself, plus I'll get fingerprints on here. So I want to do this until it feels like it's pretty cool. I never want to put a hot crucible onto the balance because what's going to happen is uh, not only will my reading be wrong, but I will warp the, the balance pan. Okay, and we, we talked about how expensive those are. So once I think this is cooled enough, I'm going to either carry it back on the wire gauze or I can put it in my petri dish to carry it back. And I'm going to measure my uh, crucible plus anhydrous compound. And I'll do it for heating one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it back and I'm going to measure the mass. Okay. Now you might ask yourself, how do I know that all the water is gone? And the, the answer is you don't really know. So you have to do what's called multiple heatings to make sure the water is gone. So once you have measured the mass of the anhydrous compound in the crucible, you're gonna bring it back and you're gonna heat it again. You're gonna give it another minute's heat. And you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna heat it for a minute, you're gonna let it cool. Once it's cooled, you're gonna mass it and you're gonna look for a temperature change. So once the, I'm sorry, a, a mass change. So once the mass has stabilized, you know that all of the water is gone. So you might need, so if you do one heating and then you do a second heating, and let's say you're still half of, or uh, 0.1 um, or 0.2 grams difference, then that means you still have water in there and you would have to do a third heating. So you need to do these heatings until the mass stabilizes.